Welcome friends, let's share a cup of coffee here. Mm. Folgers. There's a shortage of Folgers here in Thailand, believe it or not. Been buying Folgers, no problem, getting it delivered off Lazada. But all the Folgers sellers were out of Folgers coffee, so next batch I bought Maxwell House. Maxwell House coffee, good to the last drop. Here it goes then, sold down in front of four and a half. Now, Cora. Hi, Cora. My father had a car just like that. It's only $25. You stole it, if it runs. <laughs> Coffee? <laughs> Smells good. This is perfect. He doesn't talk about my coffee that way. This is Maxwell House. Been around as long as that clock. I think it tastes best. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House is always good. Try some yourself. Thanks. Hi, Cora. Hi, Hi kids. Get that clock running? Sure did, and her coffee's been fantastic. Maxwell House is the only kind I sell. Like they say, good to the last drop. <laughs> Maxwell House Coffee from General Foods. Always good to the last drop. Boy, did they get a little bit of mileage out of that slogan or what? Good to the last drop. Mm -mm. Folgers. The, what the heck was their saying? Stuff getting out of bed. To face all the chores ahead Till that aroma comes through When the folder starts to brew The best part of waking up Is Folgers in your cup Folgers is mountain-grown coffee And the rich aroma of mountain-grown beans Makes Folgers one coffee made with the morning in mind Now things are feeling right You see the morning in a whole new light there's hard work to be done, another day yet to be won. The best part of waking up is soldiers in your cup. The best, uh, the best thing about waking up was soldiers in your cup. That's right. The best thing about waking up was soldiers in your cup. So, anyway, I thought now be a good time to talk a little bit about being happy and doing the things you want in life to become a success and golly start early kids I see a lot of people who are struggling in retirement. And it looks like they're struggling anyway in retirement. Uh, they're living, they're making ends meet. And, uh, Some people you can tell are just struggling because they wanted to struggle. I think they spent their whole life just trying to get by and not, not go anywhere. You know, uh, I, it, it's, it's hard to say. If you, do, if you haven't known them their whole life, how do they get to the spot that they're in? A lot of times, bad stuff happens that are, that's outside somebody's control. Uh, I think there's been a lot of men, particularly, who have went through nasty divorces and given half of everything they had to the woman through the divorce courts, started over again, got
got married again. Some of them got divorced again. Most of them got divorced again, really. You would think that some people, after screwing it up the first time, would say, hmm, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. I think I'm just going to date a few women. Instead of every time I date a woman, I've got to marry her. What in the hell, guys? You keep, you know, you all aren't Jeff Bezos. Bezos, he could give away half of his money and still be the second or third richest man in the world. At that point, who gives a damn? You can only spend so much. He's living proof he can't outrun his money. Tries, but he can't do it. But the rest of us, the ordinary people, you just can't keep screwing your life up like this. And I see it all over the place. Bitter men. I don't know what's going on today in my little community. But in this nice, quiet community, there has been a motorcycle buzzing up and down around here. I'm about ready to go out and check to see who the hell it is. I like having a nice, quiet community. Most of the time it is, but I guess, you know, people got work to do, things going on. So uh, that's another thing about Thailand. There's a lot of vehicles here that can use it could be Midas sized. Hey, your muffler! Midas size it! Why put up with a noisy muffler? Better Midas size! Midas size it! Midas your car and you'll never buy a muffler for it again. Because at Midas, if anything ever goes wrong, we'll replace the muffler free for as long as you own your American or foreign car. Noisy muffler, don't compromise. My a lot of them need mufflers and it seems like in, in a country where maintenance is sometimes put on the furthest of the back burners that mufflers are something that wear out and just never seem to get replaced because I guess the people don't have enough money to say I'm going to spend this amount of money for a muffler. And by the way, a muffler on a motorcycle here replaced is so inexpensive. At least to me, it's so inexpensive. You probably can go get a brand new muffler put on by a technician at a motorcycle shop for a Honda, $50 total. It, it, it's so cheap. But people in this country, it seems like that when the mufflers wear out, so be it. They drive around with a loud car, a loud truck, or a loud motorcycle. There's plenty of ways to get a muffler put on, but goddamn, these people ain't figured out that they should have one. So they just drive around and make more noise. And it's especially apparent when these motorcycles have to use all the power that they have to do anything and then they have no muffler on. They sound like a weed eater going by. Anyway, I, I got off the subject here. How did I get off the subject? Well, I guess what I was trying to say was if you're young enough that it matters, Start thinking about your future in a way that you can be happy. Not rich. You know, my, my idea of success was never money. My idea of success, I've told you this a few times on my other Mark-Hanna channel. That's M-A-R-K-Hanna on YouTube. Many times... I've said my definition for success. Boo, I can't even say it. My definition for success is doing what you want, 
when you want, how you want. Doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it is my definition for success. The more hours of every day of your life that you can say you were doing what you wanted to do, when you wanted to do it, and how you wanted to do it, is how I judge a happy person. Because people are generally happier doing what they want to do and not what they have to do. And if you're stuck in a job right now that every time you wake up in the morning you feel like I have to go in and do this job or I have to get up and do this job because, well, that's what puts money in the old wallet. Find something else. Find something you enjoy doing that you can make money doing. If it pays less, so be it. Your pay can be in happiness. That is a major benefit to be happy. So... Hopefully, when you retire, you can retire to a place that is comfortable for you and a place that you enjoy being and that you don't feel like you're uh, stranded in life. So many of the guys that come to Thailand, they're my age. First thing they do is they think, I want a condo near the action. I was sort of one of them guys. I wanted a condo near the action until I realized I hate condos. Uh, but then they rent a condo, which is so small, I did not do that. They rent these condos of 23 square meters. And the kitchen has six foot of total counter space. And two foot of that is a sink. And two foot of that is a two burner cook stove in the countertop. And two foot of that is about enough room to put a coffee maker. And that's, that's their kitchen which has no hot water, by the way, no oven, uh, probably does have a microwave. So what does that lend to? Lends to the fact that they've got this tiny little cell, and I, I call it a cell because it's so small, you might, be a, might as well be a cell in a prison. So... What happens? Well, they eat out a lot, which I guess there's nothing wrong with eating out a lot. But when you eat out a lot, a lot of these guys end up, you know, well, I'll go out and get something to eat, and then I'll go to the bar. And I'll sit at the bar and I'll have a few beers. And I'll turn myself into an alcoholic, but I won't allow myself to think that. I'll think I'm under control. After all, it's just four or five beers at a night, you know. No problem. I can afford four or five beers a night. So, every night you drink four or five beers. That makes you no less of an alcoholic. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story about the most disciplined alcoholic that I've ever seen in my 68 years on this earth. When I was a young guy, I lived across the street from a, from a guy who was my best friend at the time. And I used to do a lot of hanging out at his house. And his dad, his dad owned a body shop. He was a business owner. 
he had a body shop that repaired cars, had about 20 employees. And I grew up from the time I was like seven years old across the street from him. And old George, he was a great guy. That was his dad's name, George. But when he'd come home, if you call up his house and it was, it was eight o'clock at night, he was already slurring his words. Now, he would come in the door and he would open up a quart bottle of burger beer. Burger beer was a local Cincinnati beer that was not an expensive Cincinnati beer, but it was locally brewed. And he'd open up that quarter burger and he'd start drinking it in a little tiny six ounce glass. He'd pour it in and then he put salt on top. And, and that would cause it to foam up and he'd drink that beer. And he sat at his kitchen table and he watched this nine or 10 inch black and white TV with rabbit ears on it. And he'd light up a camel cigarette. And he would smoke that cigarette and when it got down to about three quarters done, he'd take another one out and he'd light it off the first one and have another one and tap that one out. Well, every single day he'd come home from work. By 10 o'clock at night, if you called on the phone, it was, oh, right, right, right. I think he's already asleep. I mean, he was blitzed every night. And he would smoke about two packs of camels every night. On the weekends, he'd get up early, but not as early as going to work because he went to work six o'clock every morning. Weekends, he'd get up around nine o'clock. He'd start making breakfast for the neighborhood. And he'd be making bacon and eggs and He'd be doing them outside on the grill a lot of times if it was summertime and he'd have his burger beer going already. And by about three o'clock in the afternoon, he was he was already three sheets into the wind. Well, I started this story off by telling you what a disciplined alcoholic was. Every day he went up Got up 6 a.m., went to work, came home by 6 p.m. every day. I had a car that had a, a slight fender bender one time and needed a little work done on it, so I took it over to his body shop. When I went into the body shop, I asked where George was, and they said, well, he'll be right back. He's out test driving a car. I said, okay, I'll wait for him in the office. So I go into his office. I'm sitting there. I'm looking around. I don't see an ashtray. Now, I don't smoke, but I didn't see an ashtray. So a guy came in and said, George should be back eight times. I said, okay. I said, where's all the ashtrays? He said, what for? George don't smoke. I looked at him. Yeah? No, I've never seen George have a cigarette in my life. Okay. Didn't say like yeah. Then I said, wait a second. I guess George don't drink either. He says, No, I've never seen George ever drink in I've been here, you know, ten years. I've never seen him have anything to drink. So okay. So I didn't say nothing about it, but I went home and talked to my buddy. And I said, What is it? I went over to your dad's shop. And his foreman said he's never seen George have a cigarette, never seen George take a drink. What is up with that? And my friend said, well, dad doesn't smoke outside the house and he doesn't drink outside of the house ever. I said, ever? He says, no, if we go out like to a family meal and relatives are having, you know, a beer or wine or something. He never has anything. 
He never smokes, never drinks outside of the house, ever. Now, that was a disciplined alcoholic. He was a stone cold alcoholic. Liver disease killed him very young in life, like at 60. His liver was ate up. If liver wasn't going to get him, the lungs were. Smoking them unfiltered camel cigarettes. But he never let it affect his life. He got up 6 o'clock every morning. He came home 6 o'clock at night. Probably was not real happy with himself, although he seemed happy. Because there are such things as happy drunks. And he was always drunk, so he was always happy. You know, when I saw him, nine out of ten times, he wasn't at work, so he was drinking. He was always happy. I loved George. George was a, a, a trip. And his alcoholic household turned out two alcoholics. He had three children, one of which turned out to be a very respectable young lady who grew up to be a very respectable woman. And the other two boys, they ended up, both of them were alcoholics. Uh, suffered trying to various levels of alcoholism. Hell, my buddy, before I had to get rid of him out of my life, he had DUI twice on the same day. Two DUIs. One at 5 p.m. and one at 1 a.m. on the same day from the same police department. Now, that's a story for another day that I could tell you about. But the point is, <coughs> too many guys come over here, tidbits from Thailand. They're not happy with their life maybe haven't been happy with it for a very long time and they get over here and they claim to be happy and they may marry very well be but I gotta ask myself if you're retired here living in Thailand and you ask yourself how many days a week am I drinking? If it's, uh, you know, I drink on Thursday nights when I go over and, and play pool. Yeah. But if you find yourself, whether you're living in Thailand or whether you live somewhere else, if you find yourself drinking way too often, well, you probably don't think it's way too often. But if you're drinking five or six times a week, it's not doing your body very good health-wise. Because I don't know anybody that drinking, and just beer. I lost a good friend of mine, one of the, one of the funniest, happy-go-luckiest guys in the world, died so young. And he was strong as a bull, Looked like he had fabulous physique and always had a good time, but, he, you know, he drank every day. Just beer. He, didn't, he wasn't a big whiskey drinker or nothing. Just beer. Yeah. How many beers a day? I don't really know. I, I didn't hang out close enough to him all day and count. But I know one thing. By noon, he had one at least going. He may be on a second or third, I don't know, but I never seen him afternoon where he hadn't had at least one. And you know, he had the pickup truck and the cooler in the back. And he always had a six pack of cans of beer under a little bit of ice in the cooler. I mean, he drove around with it. Now, you got to remember, when we started this journey out as drivers, DUIs weren't such a thing. Yeah, I got stopped when I was young, drinking. Uh, 
obviously drinking. But the cops, would, if you were really bad, they'd offer to take you home, not to jail. And then we got mothers for mothers against drunk drivers. And, and they changed the world. Uh, we'll leave you whether or not. Look, if, if a person's truly drunk, they don't belong behind a wheel. Absolutely not. If they're truly drunk and driving like a drunk, they don't belong behind the wheel. But just because a guy had a beer or two and blows some ridiculously low level into a breathalyzer, but didn't have an accident, wasn't driving crazy, just got pulled over, and now they try to wreck his life. Well, uh, I don't agree with that, but that's the way it was. I was I was smart when I was younger. I used to have a pink Cadillac limo. Pink Cadillac limo. Downside of it, I had a sign painter paint like a name of a boat going downside. It says, kick it back in the pink Cadillac. It had pink neon lights underneath of it. It, it was a stretch limo, and I bought it. And I was the one who painted it pink. When I bought it, it was white. I said, who wants a boring old white limo? Let's paint it pink and have some fun with this thing. I mean, you'd be surprised it looks you get go out drinking in a pink limo. Well, when I was in my 30s, we go out and drink, but I never drove. If I was going to have a single drink, just one, that was enough I wasn't driving. Not without eight hours. If I was going out drinking, especially at night, we'd hire a guy to drive the limo. And we'd go out in the limo and we'd, we'd drink to excess. Once in a while, not all the time, but once in a while. And that kept me from getting DUIs. I'm sure that if I did not invest the money to get a car that I could be driven around in, I would have got a DUI. So anyway, some people on this channel said, yeah, you got a lot of stories. I do. A little bit of wisdom here, there, and the other where. So... If you don't spend a little time in your life deciding what's important to you, you're going to spend your life doing unimportant things that make you unhappy. To that I say, what a shame. Because you should be happy with yourself at all times. Be happy. That's all, folks.